Welcome everyone to another base layout tutorial. This is the Night Elf base layout tutorial. For the purposes of this first layout tutorial, we're gonna be assuming that the enemy player is Orc. We would like to save our Wisps from Blademaster Harass. A Blademaster is thicker than workers, ghouls and footmen. So lay layouts against Orc that are safe only apply against Orc and do not apply as much in other matchups. This Ancient of War is going to creep and the Altar and Moonwell start forming a semicircle that will keep the Blade Master out of your Lumber Wisps. This reduces greatly the amount of attention you need to make in order to cycle your Wisps that are getting hurt, put them in the mine, take a healthy one out and so on and so forth. So it really pays to just have a solid layout on every map. We continue the semicircle with one gap openings between moonwells as follows. Eventually, when the Ancient of War is finished creeping, he will uproot and he will walk back to complete the wall off. We will build one more moonwell here for a three moonwell close off. And then when you put the Ancient of War in front, you've got a full wall off behind which an archer or a keeper of the grove can stand and protect himself from any would be assailant. Make sure that the full wall off is never Altar, Huntress Hill and Moonwells alone. You want to make sure that the Ancient of War is the portal to paradise. All wisps can be safely made behind the wall off now. And this is the essential part of an anti-Blade Master uh, wall off. This is part of the reason why Night Elves have been able to, for years if not a decade, go for one Archer openings all the way to tier 3. Even against Blade Master and four Grunts openings, because your Demon or your Keeper can stand behind the wall, you can use two Wisps to repair a Moonwell that is being attacked by gr Grunts and Blade from the outside, while you're going tier 3 and going for double Ancient of Wind behind it. This is another very important part of your layout. Make sure that your tech buildings fit behind. That also means don't build your Hunter's Hall here, because you'd be occupying two very important spaces for your Ancient of Wind. If it's lores you want, you can always build the Hunter's Hall somewhere where it doesn't block those very essential two lore or wind uh, spots. Another option is that you build Hunter's Hall in a kind of secretive place so that if someone does a cursory glance at your base, they do not detect your Hunter's Hall, thereby identifying that you are going for lore openings. This does come at a risk because if they find the Hunter's Hall, it is easy pickings. However, Hunter's Hall is a very high health building at 1100 HP, so that makes it not the most easily killable building. This is the essentials of the base layout against Blade. Keep in mind if you're facing Parseer, Feral Spirits can still penetrate your defenses. This is an opening, this is an opening, and yeah, that's it. So Feral Spirits can get in. The way I personally deal with Feral Spirits is make sure if these are fair spirits, put two hits on each and then simply use a wisp to detonate and the fair spirits are dead, giving you 12 or 20 experience per wolf. I think it's 20 still. When you identify that the opponent has a farseer with an early wisp scout, which you should do way before you tech to tier 2, you will simply make more wisps before teching. The normal amount of wisps is... Um, make as many wisps until you're at 21 food with one archer and a hero. This is 7 food, this is another 5, so a total of 12 food, which isn't lumber wisps, which leaves 9 wisps on lumber. So 9 wisps on lumber is standard. If you're facing Farseer, simply go up to 11 or 12 wisps on lumber and use liberal amount of wisps to detonate on wolves and take them down in the process. This is how I personally defend against Farseer. If you have found other ways that are more effective or that you think work well for you, feel free to let me know. The moment you detect that he has a Farseer, you can stop building your SimCity in a semicircular shape. We're assuming that these three buildings are part of your initial wall off. You do not need to finish up with the Moonwell here. Farseer has all kinds of ways to harass the back of your base. So instead of making this really scrumptious 
small little crunched build, you want to create a little bit more space and openness so that you can freely navigate your own base against any possible future wyvern harass that might be going on your wisps. Farseer is far more likely to, to transition to an air-based tactic than Blademaster usually is. This is Nightelf versus Orc in a nutshell. Now, Nightelf versus Human. Footmen are the main threat when it comes to harassing your wisps. Lore tactics are 100% the standard against human, so uh, lore tactics are actually something that requires the most amount of lumber. Protecting your wisps from easy death is very important. So against human, what I like to do is build most of my moon wells relatively close to forests and never giving an easy place for the opponent to build towers that I personally cannot get to. For example, if I were to say build my layout as follows, I don't know why you would do that. This would be pretty silly because he could make towers here and it's like, well, my bears can't get there. So don't do that. Instead, you're just gonna kind of spread your moon wells around so that you can make the footman travel as much real estate as possible. When he goes from one wisp to another, you want that footman to make maximum travel distance in your base. So I'll build a moon wall here, I'll build a moon wall here, and I'll build a moon wall here. Then I spread my wisps accordingly at different places. So that later, when footmen are harassing, they need to go from this wisp, which I will then put in my mine as follows. Then they're going for this wisp, I will send it over here. They go for this wisp, I send it over here. And every time they go past the wisps, my tree of life, my ancients of war are hitting. It definitely takes some experience and experimentation to find a perfect layout that works for you. Keep in mind that you can check your layout against the computer as I am doing now. There's no need to surrender to the pressure of an online multiplayer experience while fixing something as basic and as easily preparable as a base layout. This deserves to be done on the drawing board against the AI. And then once you have something you're happy with, take it to a higher pressure situation, for example, against the multiplayer on ladder. The Huntress Hall is something that can be canceled by an early rifle push. So make it in a little bit more of a safe location. But try to avoid what I did just here, where it's kind of hard to navigate in and out outside of your own base. For example, if I have a town portal against the rifle caster push because he storm bolted my hero here, and I do a double click, I'm gonna go bottom right of my base. I now do not have access to one of my three moon wells, and I need to walk into the lion's den, which is him pressuring from the front with rifle caster, in order to even just get to that moon well. So you definitely want to keep this real estate safe so that you have a back door exit and a front door exit. Against human, the whole concept is space and spreadage of moon wells. They used to tower rush us a lot in the past and rifle casters may still do that. Make sure that a single setup of towers never hurts all parts of your base. This is why the concept is spread, spread, spread. Against undead, all moon wells must be two spots from the forest. Not zero, not one, but two. The reason is, undeads often come in with death knight. And what a death knight will do is we'll do a single auto attack. Not zero, not one, but two. He will do a single auto attack on a wisp, bringing it to under 100 life, and then he will coil it. If all your wisps are next to a moonwell as follows, mining, doing their own business, and a wisp ever takes critical amount of damage so that the next coil will kill it, you can simply wait for the coil, quickly press your moonwell in order to get your health back, and you will waste the coil without him getting the kill or the experience. If you start doing moonwells like this, not only are they easily killed and surrounded by ghouls, and the wisp has to travel further to repair the moonwell, but you also don't get the comfort of having your wisps be mining lumber while dodging coil with the healing from the moonwell. This is the main concept against undead. Secondly, in the past, gargoyles against undead were often a threat, so they're gonna harass over the forest. So again, you want those moonwells spread. You don't wanna have all your wisps in one place unless you go for an ancient protector there, which can help a bit against gargs. 
but the concepts remain the same. Have freedom of movement around your own base so that your ground-based army can easily travel to the backwards recesses of your base and protect against Gargs. Finally, undead these days often go Crypt, Fiend and Destroyer. They like to uh, get pretty aggressive with that at some point in the game. So it's always nice to have an Ancient of War here as an anchor point so that if they ever walk into your base in order to harass a clutch of wisps that is right here, they need to walk past that Ancient of War and take a few hits. Often the presence of an Ancient of War in a primary walking path is enough to make them focus it first so that they do not take 40 damage normal on Cryptvians per hit as they are standing in the middle of it. Shops are incredibly important to protect and put in a safe place against undead. This would be a pretty solid position that allows you to reach your natural, your reach your main, and not have it be in an exposed situation. Don't build your shop here against undead. You need it for healing potions and anti-magic shell. That's against undead. The next one is for Night Elf versus Night Elf. In Night Elf versus Night Elf, there are two different threats that you'll generally face. These days, three. It's either mass bears, mass huntresses, or mass glaive throwers. They all require a different approach. But the first one you must be aware of is mass huntresses, as mass huntresses is the earliest threat that could potentially hit you. If you are an archer based player and you may be facing mass huntresses, it is important to create a safe haven against Huntresses as follows. This is a nice way to build your base against Huntresses. If you ever TP, double click, you get in this position. If you aim, you will also aim somewhere here. Your archers from this place have an excellent time defending Huntresses. Although this is a three space opening and one or one and a half hunters can pass through it at the same time, it is exceedingly easy to pluck those gaps with a wisp, put them on hold position, make another moonwell to lock them in later, that if you have a bit of vision, you start taking them down with, a, with an Ancient of Wonders, which gives you dust. Uh, you can put your hero in between and no hunters can pass. You can put Treyons in between. So by the time you know that they're doing huntresses, you'll still only have two moonwells. If they are double Ancient of War mass hunts, you can simply make the third and the fourth, get your archers behind it, and then tech towards something that can out-sustain huntresses. For example, two Ancient of Lore, or maybe bears and tier three. Or maybe you will go all the way to mountain giants. It's all possible. You can even do mass archers and talents. This works really well against huntresses. Finally, if you face mass glaive throwers, it's really very much about engaging them out in the open before they get to your base. So you shouldn't have much consideration about how you're going to build your base against mass glaives. For after all, if they ever get to your base with mass glaives, especially with their current power level, and that right now it's November the 21st, 2018, uh, your base will not survive for more than three seconds anyway. It's like wanting your sand castle to be beautiful when it's on the edge and the uh, sea is flooding in. It doesn't matter how it looks like, it'll soon be gone. So don't put too much attention on glaive thrower threats and how to fend them off effectively. It's about engaging out in the open. Finally, if it's mass bears, this will do just fine as well. But if it's mass bears without a goblin laboratory, like on Echo Isles, making more of a wall off towards your tree can pay off because mass bears has one of the highest siege damage and they can easily go for your tree, surround it and kill it. And it's a big win condition in many high level night elf mirror games. So having a bit of a blockage here is going to be very effective. And you're the master with the key to, to the paradise. You can always uproot and walk in and out. Naturally. Hope you enjoyed the base layout tutorial. Maybe in the future we do with more detail and more production value. But that's going to be it for now to sustain you. Keep in mind that Warcraft 3 PTR is now playable already if you pre-purchased Warcraft 3. Simply go to my Twitch channel and type exclamation mark classic. You can see the link that Blizzard posted on 21st of November. Enjoy! Play some Warcraft. The campaign is unlocked with that as well. And you can start trying out your base layouts and your games against the AI as well. See you next video.